them. Um, our, our drummer, Derek, it used to be uh, with Social Distortion, um, DI, Agent Orange, and now he's Tamago, in our band. Uh, bass player, Warren. The big Tamago. From a band called the Cadillac Tramps in the United States. And Final Conflict, which is another old punk rock band. And then our guitar player, Joe, is only 18, and he's never really done anything until this. We found him on the internet. So eBay. He was expensive. E-boy. It was e-boy, actually. He was expensive. Yeah. <laughs> He's a, a, a fan of the band. He used to come see us play. He was actually in a band, just like a young band, and they recorded with our drummer. We stole him when we found out how good he was. <laughs> yeah. What does this band think about this? Oh, we don't care. He still plays music with all of his, his old bands and friends, too. When did you join the band? How old He's been with us since he was 15. So yeah, he used to bug us a lot more. He used to get on your nerves when he was younger. <laughs> He's learning. Yeah, no, we, we were able to get him into clubs and stuff relatively easily. There was a few that we had problems with, so we generally, in the United States, play all ages, so it's never been a big, big problem. Well, we, we've always, you know, we started the band yeah. together. It was our band when we were 16. It's our band now when we're 45. Yeah. And it'll be our band when we're 64. What happened to the Agnew Brothers? Um, Rick plays in Christian Death. Frank still plays with us in the United States, but he doesn't uh, like to, to travel too much. Uh, so he's a family, likes to stay yeah. close to home, so. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't like the tour. So if we play in Los Angeles, he'll come out and play shows. And Alfie's a professor of uh, something rather, sociology. Or he's, yeah, he's a physics, he's, he's physics professor. Physics professor, that's right. He's I too smart for us. <laughs> kind of vary from, um, most of us were like lower middle class or, or less. My dad had a government job, yeah. um, but he didn't make much money. We, uh, you know, every, it, it, none of us really came from money, that's for sure. Uh, well, my family was on welfare. I came from a single, fa single parent family raised by my mother. And uh, I was the oldest of five, so there was, you know, we, we lived in poverty. And um, um, I don't know. There was there's not really very much to say about it, except that that was just how I grew up. I didn't know any other way, so I didn't miss things. And you know, the, the, what I needed was always there. There was food, and you know, the clothes had holes in them, but they fit. And uh, there was a bed to sleep in. And uh, my mother didn't encourage really encourage music, but she really encouraged reading and writing. So. Um, you know, and she always encouraged me to, to get my ideas out on the paper, and, and uh, she gave us a place to rehearse sometimes when we needed it, and it was good. We're just fucking talented. <laughs> it's in the water. It's in the water. It's the water that dribbles off the Matterhorn in Disneyland and goes right into the water system. And then we, uh, yeah, we that's all drink the, it. the reason is if you go and see a band with some of the caliber of guitar players that you that, that you that, that you you hear on these records, you go and see those bands on a regular basis. You pick things up. They pick things up when they support your band. We went to the same high schools. Uh, we. Yeah, we're kind of the same parties. Practice the early the punk scene, studio. all those bands were the early punks. I mean, everyone was in a band, you know. It was we practiced in the same studio, mechanic studio and the detour studio, so we all practiced in the same place. So we all, you know, we all saw each other, and, and there was a lot of um, fluidity between bands. So the band members crossed back and forth across these bands, so everybody was kind of learning and bringing their own unique thing into the into the fold and into the mix. It was, it was cool. Every once in a while a scene just, you know, of people just break out because they've got something unique to offer. And there's an inspiration too, say if you, yeah, you see, you know, 
Agent Orange some night and you go, I'm going to go, you know, they were great. And you go, I, I got to make sure my band's great the next time. I think we kind of all pushed each other, you know, not in a not in competitive a or a bad way, but just in a, you know, yeah, we it's like, hey, we got to keep up with everyone else, you know. You know, we never thought for a, a minute that we would end up, you know, in Europe playing music. We didn't think we'd end up in Los Angeles playing music, so it just keeps amazing us. <laughs> no. We never had those opportunities, no. We're not one of those bands, I don't think. But I would jump at the opportunity in a heartbeat. <laughs> You would? Yeah, because what makes those assholes bigger assholes than indie assholes? Yeah. An asshole's an asshole. They all We've stink. We've been ripped off at every level. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Shit, shit is shit, you know? It's all the same. In what ways were you ripped off? One, what a list. <laughs> every way imaginable. <laughs> There, I don't think there's been one label we've ever worked with that we haven't had problems with at some point, some point you know? The first label we, 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 that we worked with, actually, is the second one, which was Frontier, has been at least consistent in making sure that that the the, the original deal that we had is, is honored. And, and uh, she's, been, she's been great. She's been, you know, throughout you know, my adult life, very helpful. But, you know, overall, I mean, you know, there's a diamond in the rough right there. Just I mean, because you're involved in punk doesn't make you uh, more a saint or more honorable. Yeah, There's right. just as many <laughs> you know, shady, you know, crooked people in this end of it too. That's right. Dignity and honor are things that come in in, in all in all levels and in all professions. There are some people in any profession that have ideals and that are honorable and have dignity. And then you find one of those, and you find nine of the other kind. It yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> shirt you like it <laughs> what's mike, something weird mike Vraney gave me this his uh, his video company the owner of the company gave it to you yeah I who'd have thought uh, yeah no do they come from uh oc too no seattle washington how But did you meet him Vraney used to uh, manage the adolescents in the, in the mid 80s no way yeah way <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and he's a, a friend of ours. His, uh, his son's band, uh, D.E.K., did a couple of tours with us in the United States. They're a Seattle band. And then, like, you know, the guys, uh, Tom of the Accused, works over at Something Weird. So there's just a lot of, there's a lot of Something Weird punk rock tie in there. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I with, like those movies us. that get out on uh, Something Yeah, me Can too. Can you tell us something about the, um, who is it? I don't know his name. You Mike. Know, what is kind of a guy? Tall. <laughs> Really tall, really fun, enjoyable man, but he's a knowledge bank of comic books and movies. The kind of movies that most people uh, didn't care about were the kinds of movies that he did care about. And so, I mean, he's a virtually a, a film historian. I mean, he's like an archivist of film. He's yeah. fucking brilliant, yeah. Yeah, he's a good dude. And his wife is an amazing artist. They're really cool. She's a great, too. Yeah, what a neat family. There's a family that every American family should strive to become like. <laughs>